Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight we're going to uh, do session three of our of our study on um, depression, and so we're coming to a, a a part where it's quite practical. It will just be practical ideas um, for tonight. And just again, a, a quick reminder that I know that we are talking about a very sensitive topic. So again, I want to be um, just to let you know that I approach the subject with the utmost amount of care and concern um, for anyone who is undergoing any sort of depression, struggling with this issue. It's a, it's a very real um, issue to struggle with. And uh, again, we just uh, very mindful. There's a, a real a need to understand that we have a duty to care for those people in our churches who are struggling with depression. And we have to be extremely careful with our words and how we how how we communicate uh, to those people about um, about the, the the depression that they're undergoing. So I want to just make sure that we 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 realize how sensitive it is, especially uh, where we are in Ireland. So so well, thank you for joining us tonight, and I do pray that this will be uh, an encouragement to you. So we're talking about practical upward steps. We've gone through some of the definitions, the dynamics, the way it presents itself. Um, I hope by now that you're mindful of the fact that it's it, it's extremely debilitating, um, that it can it, it you know the idea of being completely hopeless and and um, it's a real sense of loss that prevailing the disparity that just um, that that seems to just suffocate and and overwhelm people. It's 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 a very real real um turmoil that people go through so we want to be careful and so we have spoken a little bit about some of the, the definitions and how it presents itself and we have also uh, last week i gave some personal assignments to um from genesis chapter 4 first kings uh and also from jonah to help people think about god um how the main characters what they reveal about their relationship with god um, what mistaken views about about God's character um, that they are entertaining? When you think of Cain, for example, he is quite flippant, quite irreverent, um, has no real sense of the fear of the Lord, um, is willing to um, to entertain his his thoughts, and then to act on it, knowing full well that um, he is given into into sin. There, um, when we think of Elijah, he is. He is uh, running away from God, asking, what are you doing here? And he's had this great, huge victory. And now he is in this place where he, he, does, he, he doesn't want to live. And he's, he's, he has some understanding of who God is. That, and he's misplaced his idea of trust. And, um, and when we think of Jonah, who, again, has this great victory, but is quite reluctant all the way through um, to be obedient to uh, to obey God's word because he understands that God is gracious, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he can't rationalize the idea that God can be gracious to them. Um, and so he has this confused idea of, of God's grace and, and, and God's sovereignty, if, if want, uh, because God is, is going to rescue, is going to redeem, is going to save a group of people um, in Babylon in Nineveh that Jonah just can't understand why. Um, then he goes into that pity party and he sulks and, and the Lord has to remind him of his grace. Um, so just some mistaken views about God's character, about his promises, about his commands um, that help us identify how we respond to God and to the situations that we might find ourselves in. Um, what are the clearly understood attitudes toward God, towards others and their circumstances from these passages? And that was just designed so that we can help ourselves think about how we respond to God, um, how we respond to others, and how we respond to the to the circumstances in our lives. And then I ask you to write out a personal statement. Um, when I begin to feel these kind of attitudes, or when I start to misinterpret God's character, when I when I um, lose sight of his promises and his commands, then how do I how do I come back and, and check myself and and rationalize through the scriptures and think things through by faith. So that I make the right responses and, and my attitudes, they come in line with this. So we spoke a little bit about that. Um, and let me just remind tonight again that um, we, uh, when we just, let me go back there. I just want to talk about, remember we, we spoke uh, in, in, the, in the, I think it was in the second se session, uh, but how, how there's this downward spiral and we need to be command oriented 
and not feelings oriented. Um, we spoke about how circumstances, how we are supposed to respond by faith, thinking about God's grace, or we can respond in the flesh or through unbelief. And we spoke about how those different responses either take us away deeper and downwards into more despair, or then if we make the right um, assumptions from God's word, if we if we respond by faith and we respond um, trusting God in his character, in his person, and in his grace, and we continue to to seek to 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 want to bring him glory, um, then the upward spiral, the upward walk out of that spiral is is becomes possible. And that's really what we want to do as as Christians. When, when we find ourselves in whatever space we might find ourselves, as far as our emotions or our thinking and our attitudes and what we do with our lives, when we find ourselves in a place where we're starting to be to behave in a particular way or think in a particular way where we're no longer honoring God, where we're no longer pleasing Him, then we have to start thinking in ways that help us correct those thinking. And remember that the Bible says that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And we also have to love others like we love ourselves. So when we think about that there. So so let's think about how we can we can when we get to a place where we understand where we are and we we now realize that we are in a place where we are no longer functioning, uh, we're no longer bringing God the glory and the worship. We're no longer honoring him like we know that we can. We think of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3 there. Um, and just to remind, I was speaking to a gentleman a couple of weeks ago and asked him, when he thinks about worship, what does he think about? And I just had to help him think about the fact that our everyday life, the way we think, the way we reason, our attitudes, our actions, all of that is supposed to be the way we worship God, the way we honor God, the way we bring him glory. So keeping all those things in mind as a basis, as a foundational way that we want to work and walk our way out of this um, prevailing um, circumstances in our lives where our feelings and our uh, and our attitudes have become so so low that we feel um, that suffocating um, overwhelming depression how do we make our way then um, back out of that spiral so we're going to talk a little bit about um, um, so just just uh, these are just practical suggestions they they're in random order um, and so um, I hope you'll bear with me and I hope that you'll find these an encouragement. So don't go through life without fellowship, without some idea of fun, without some support of friends. Um, and remember we said that depression um, reinforces itself. It, 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 it just makes it without the sense of um, discipline and wanting to, to break where we are, the patterns of where we are, it becomes very difficult. So the, the most important thing, or one of the things is to, to look for fellowship. Um, to 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 accept and welcome the support of friends. Keep in touch with friends will help you receive the, the positive reinforcement that you would need to function wholesomely. Someone has said a friend a day keeps depression away. And I think that's a, a meaningful thought there. Ask for what you need. Um, do not go through life without the support of friends who care about you. Have a sympathetic understanding or caring friend who will listen and share your feelings. So in other words, don't Act on that idea that if you don't do these things, you're going to reinforce uh, the depression that, that's already there. And the, one of the things you need to do is to not isolate yourself even further, but to go and look for people that you can trust, that you can depend on, and for ask to ask for what you need. Become involved in a small group Bible study. Take time to fellowship with one another um or two committed christians at the same time and you must remember that fellowship has to do with union with communion of it's a sharing of common beliefs it's not just about food and eating but find people who you connect with um who believe the same things that you do who are committed to the lord jesus um who will give you wise counsel who will have your back who will tell you when things are wrong who will who will be there for you who have who, who you can really um fellowship with um spend each spend time each day meditating on god's word and applying it in your everyday life um and i want to just stress this again over and over again we didn't say a whole lot in the beginning but ultimately it is god it is god's word who is your authority 
Um, the Spirit of God will take God's Word, apply it in your life, and help you change. So you have to think about God's Word, chew on it, um, regurgitate it, think on it, pray about it. And there's some verses there to, to help you um, in your mind, because really we have to renew our minds, transform our minds, um, bring it in line with God's Word. Have a daily routine that brings personal satisfaction to you, and that will glorify God through your life. So I was talking to someone today again, just just said to them, if you were waking up today and life was sort of ordinary and things were fine, what would you have to do today in your daily life? Write those things down and keep to the schedule as best as you can um, so that at the end of the day, you walk out of the day knowing that you have glorified God with your with your day and it brings you a sense of real personal satisfaction never accept any present mood as permanent um and i think that's something to remember we do not want to um, reinforce the idea that we are going to stay like this all the time depression is a common ailment shared by many many people it is not unusual it is not uncommon it is not it doesn't have to be permanent you can return to the person you were or you can even grow stronger um, into the person that God is busy making you into. You must remember you're, you're changing from glory into glory, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse eight, 18. Never, ever give up. Um, and that's important. Again, we just want to reiterate, we, we don't want to reinforce um, that depressive state. We want to move our way out of it. Um, here's just a warning if you do spend more than 30, min 30 minutes feeling depressed um, pick up the phone talk to someone visit with someone don't stay where you are let them know that you're feeling depressed um, speak to someone who you, you know will care for you um, if it's life-threatening or it lasts a couple of weeks then go and have a, a thorough physical checkup by a physician who knows what to look for um, and again um Never self-prescribe antidepressant drugs for yourself or anyone else. Um, explain to the physician all your symptoms, how long you've been feeling depressed, um, and all the, all the all the criteria that they need to be able to help you. Um, and if you feel like you're a danger to yourself, please don't be alone. Find someone. Um, and if that's not practical, call someone up. And um, there are hotlines that you can call, suicide hotlines. Um, and you need to need to reach out to someone if if this if your feelings of depression just lingers and stays and and um, you can't find your way out you need to just reach out for help um, um, and then if there are sometimes which is really unkind but if friends or family scold you for being depressed explain to them that you don't want self pity but you really want help that you need a firm caring attitude. You need people who will encourage, support you, and sustain you during this terribly low time in your life. Um, and while people, some people might tell you to snap out of it, um, it's not really possible. You cannot simply just make yourself snap out of it. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Asking yourself to snap out of severe depression makes as much sense as asking someone to snap out of diabetes or an underactive thyroid gland. It's, it's. You, you can't do that. Um, you do need help and you do need friends who will support you and encourage you. Um, do not make any major decisions while you are depressed. And and um, and, and that's true. Um, even if you're, if you're struggling with grief or if it's been a major incident in your life, it's never a good idea to make major decisions while you're feeling um, completely at sea. Put them off or get someone else to make them for you until you can gain the right perspective. Um, because I think I've, your, your thinking can become distorted. I know when I lost my wife for a while, I, I couldn't function more than a day, a week or two, and then a month or two or three months. So it's it's very difficult to make um, meaningful decisions when your mind is clouded with with um, feelings of depression or, or overwhelming grief or, or anything like that. Uh, but don't forget to accept your own responsibility. No one else can accept it but you. Um, you and I, when we know that we're in a situation at the end of the day, it is ultimately our responsibility. You and I have the problem and you can do nothing. You must do something about it. Um, again, we're just trying to reinforce the idea that depression in itself will reinforce the depression and you have to think and reason through it. Um, and we have to, we have to realize that we are responsible ultimately. 
we have the power to, to work our way through. Ask yourselves what you can learn from your depression and from your stress. And I know this might sound like something that you, you don't even want to consider right away or, or something that might be a bit thought, thoughtless, but um, the stress can be used as a learning experience to in order to develop and to grow as a person. Um, and I know that might not, might not seem like a meaningful thing, but remember that James says that any trial that comes our way is designed to teach us endurance and patience um, and, and, and help us to grow into a sense of maturity. So write out on a three by five card, you know, God loves me just as much now as in my brightest and happiest moment of life. Um, there are valid reasons why I'm, I am depressed and my depression is telling me that there's something bothering me about the way I am living my life. Um, write this down. Um, this this downtime will help me to understand myself better. I'm going to learn something new and I'm going to grow from this experience. I'm going to feel better. This too shall pass. And and really what, what we're trying to tell ourselves and reason with ourselves and counsel ourselves is with this idea that it's not going to be permanent, that it is possible for us to learn from this and to move ourselves out of the downward spiral away from where we are into functioning and reasoning and thinking more. But as we're doing that, we are asking God to to teach us um, in those areas of our lives, maybe where we're lacking, where our thinking needs to to change, where we maybe need to think of him more clearly, uh, biblically accurate uh, than maybe we were before. And maybe there are things in our lives, um, areas that maybe we stress about or worry about that we need to leave with him and we, he might be teaching us things about those areas um, that we never have thought of before. So just remember, uh, so, so, so learn to think like that and remember that this too will pass. God has promised, verse Corinthians 10, 13, that he will help us, that he is faithful, that he will walk through this with us. Write out several stop cards um, with Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9 on one side and the word stop in large Red letters with a mark on the other side. So write write those words on there because they think they, they they talk about thinking things that are true and noble and honorable and right and pure and lovely. So have them scattered around your house. Put one on your fridge, one in your car, or someplace around your house. And whenever you find yourself um, thinking about um, thoughts or having attitudes or thinking incorrectly about who God is, about what life's like. If you find yourself um, thinking or reasoning in a way that moves you back down the spiral um, towards your depression, then then help let these verses remind you um, that your that your heart, your attitude, and your thinking needs to be done in a particular way um, that has to do with what is right, what is honorable, what is pure, what is lovely, what is of good reputation, what is excellent, what's worthy of praise. Um, and 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 allow those verses and those passages of scripture to 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 stop your mind and your reasoning and your actions from going down um, that spiral again. Um, so um, learn to use these as a, those moments to 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 help you think about things in a proper way. Trust in the Lord as fully as you can. Do not rely on the religious or any other feelings, good or bad. But we need to trust in God's grace and in his mercy alone. Um, do not examine your religious experiences at these times. You can't go by your feelings when you're depressed. You can firmly hold on to the facts in the Bible. Faith, you must remember, is relying on God, not on our feelings. Um, and we must remember Hebrews 11 tells us that the substance of our faith, what gives it its credibility and its weight is not something that's within us. It is outside of us. We, Our faith and our trust and our sense of um, strength comes from a God who is who has promised us. Um, and we need to depend on him. And we need to trust his word. We need to trust his promises. We need to trust his character. And so um, and so that's that's what faith looks like. It's what gives it its weight. It's what gives it its its substance. It is what we need to build our faith upon. So meditate on some of the scriptures that are mentioned there, Psalm 42, verse 34, and then some of them there. Just think about, I'll leave them up there for a while, but just think about the, the fruit of the Spirit. 
um, all of those verses, Romans chapter 5, that we have a, a, an anchor, we can stand firm, um, just trusting in God's word, depending on his word, trusting in his character, believing in him, that there is the source of our faith, the sense, the, 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 the force of our strength, um, what we rely on and trust on, trust in. Um, and read some good sound Christian books that give you a good perspective of who God is. Um, and I found this to be quite interesting. Uh, when, when Tanya passed, my wife passed, um, I found that when if I needed to read something, I needed to read something that would capture my mind or would shut it in in a, in a particular way that I was only focusing on something um, that was quite stringent to read. And I, I was reading a book by um, Udo Middleman at the time, God at Work with Man. Um, and I started reading stuff and, and, and those books really stretched my mind. So again, it's it's a way to to allow our minds and our hearts to move outside of that zone where it is being forced to just think about the places where we are you know in in depression that that reinforces that it doesn't allow our minds to think beyond what we're capable of so um find a, a book that stretches you or, or start reading stuff that that is going to stretch you and and help you think find good books on uh, about who god is i read an old book that i've had for for many many years uh uh, Swin Swindoll's Improving Your Serve, just to, to rem remind myself to think about serving God. Um, just books like that. Um, I started reading The Innocence of God by uh, uh, Udo Middleman again. Um, just read books that, that will stretch your mind and, 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 and encourage you to think um, outside of what you're experiencing. Your most valued person must be Jesus Christ. It should not change. Um, and the reality that we need to focus on is that his love is unconditional and that his love is eternal. And we need to focus our attention on him. Um, we need to go to the cross, look at our lives in the in light of the, the shadow of the cross, of how Jesus uh, paid for our sins, how he went to the cross for us, how he is the perfect God-man, how he is the perfect intercessor, um, how he's our advocate and and also we need to remember that we need to love him with all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our souls, and that we need to love him and put him first. Um, and here's an interesting exercise. If Jesus was to come and visit you right now in wherever you might be in, you know, um, what word of encouragement would he share with you? What would he say to you to help you out of your, your, your state of depression? Um, and think about that. Your main role, in life mine anyone else's is always to bring him the glory that he deserves so we, we must really learn to take the attention the focus off of ourselves like like john the baptist says we need to decrease and he must increase in our lives um and the spiral remember um we either respond by faith in his grace or we respond in the flesh and we we give in and we think in ways that moves us further away from honoring him and making him the focus in our lives. Uh, personalized scripture by substituting the second person plural and third person. Well, just substitute the pronouns and put yourself in there. Even put your name in there. Um, like Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, you can say, for by grace, Sean has been saved through faith. And this is not of myself. It's got nothing to do with Sean. It is the gift of God, not, not as the result of Sean's works, that Sean should boast. For Sean um, is God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, for good works which God prepared beforehand that Sean should walk in them. And um, just how personalized the scripture. So that is not just something that's outside of you, um, something that is meaningful that you need to apply in your life. Um, remember when we first started out, I we mentioned a couple of things that uh, as a foundational way, we when we think about helping one another and caring for one another, we thought about the importance of God's word. But we also mentioned of how it is important for us to have an encounter with God every day. Uh, we have this working, walking relationship with him where he's talking to us through the scriptures, by the way. That's how God speaks through the Bible. Um, through the authority of his of his word and when he speaks to us and makes things clear that's when we uh, exercise faith we obey him and we walk with him um, so 
reinforce that idea, make the scriptures alive um, in your life and, and trust them and obey them and walk according to the scriptures. Stick to a daily routine that brings personal satisfaction to you. And again, I said this earlier, um, even though it might sound simple, even though it might sound very basic, the most important thing is to keep to the routine, to still be functional, to go about your daily life, um, to do the things that you once knew that you had to do. Make an effort to get rid of grudges, resentments, bitterness, and anger on a daily basis. Um, don't let the sun go down, Ephesians. Down your wrath. Deal with your anger before you go down, go to bed at night. So also just to help to, to stop the reinforcing nature of uh, depression. You know, you, you can talk about bitterness and, and, and the anger and the malice that comes with that or that could cause the depression. Um, get rid of all of those emotions, all of those attitudes on a, on a very daily basis and leave them with the Lord. Do everything you can to remove family conflicts. Um, you know, if, if it's in your home, um, become more intimate with your spouse and your children. Um, anything that stops you and hinders you from having a meaningful relationship with those around you who can help you and support you. See if you can find a way to modify or remove the causes of your stress. Um, if your depression is caused by by stress, you need to find out what's the source of it. Can you remove it? Can you alter it? Can you change it? Um, can you maybe make it into smaller pieces so that you're not overwhelmed um, by it? So again, we just need to learn to discipline our minds and our thinking, um, order things in a way, our prioritizing things so that we can manage our lives in a way that helps us move out of that downward spiral. Think through your values. Um, what do you want out of this life? Can you arrange things so that you can obtain your goals in a different manner? And again, I didn't we didn't speak a whole lot about it, but one of the things that I always taught taught my goals, and I was taught as well, and I try to teach others, it's it's one of the ways to learn to cope is to think about your goals. Where can you be in three months' time, in six months' time? What do I need to learn about the Lord? What what changes in my life and how can I set goals to achieve that? Um, and 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 I think that process does um, bring to light the things that are important to us, and and maybe the things that are important to us um, measure up to idolatry, and it, it does help us um, think about what's important. Rule out any physical causes of your depression. If you find some physical causes, um, then you must have them treated medically. Um, you have to go to a doctor and ask them to to to, to examine you properly. Uh, but again, just remember, as we we've, we've spoken, depression can be caused by many, a myriad of things. It's it's multidimensional. Um, so just keep an open mind and be and be and, and, and realize that it could be caused by by many 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 things. Um, get sleep, exercise, plenty of relaxation. Um, yeah, and eat properly. Um, and I think this is so, so overlooked, um, even for me in the beginning stages of dealing with the loss and the grief. I felt tired all the time um, and then slowly realized that exercise and and um, getting the right sleep, they were all, my body was in need of that. You need to, you need to do that um, and eat properly too. Um, ask yourselves, what am I doing that could be causing me to be depressed? How much stress am I undergoing? Um we already we basically already said something like that. Force yourself to stay active and to be with other people. Break any negative behavior pattern. Um, and that's important. Um, find people, make a point of it. Make 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 appointments, make dates, um, go and see people, um, have them over if you can, and visit people. Spend time with a mature friend. We mentioned that a little bit earlier. Ask yourself if I wasn't depressed, what would I do? And then get up and go and do it. Um, that just will help us get into the to the habit of doing things again that bring honor and glory to God. And then also just try doing things spontaneously. Focus on actions and thoughts that will keep you moving in the opposite direction from depression. So some days, if I know I've got some spare time, I just go to the car, go for a walk, or just do something that I hadn't planned, just to um to keep my mind and my and my and and to keep active too. Set some realistic goals in your life. Plan your day the night before on paper. Just stick with your schedule. Don't take life so seriously. Uh, bring your goals into keeping with your abilities. That's important. Um, become more practical. Don't be unreasonable. 
with yourself. Stop being obsessive, compulsive. Um, I've even thought about, um, you know, there's a sense where some folks are perfectionists and that can be something that um, doesn't lend itself to um, a sense of re realistic or a realistic lifestyle. Relax your critical, judgmental, perfectionist attitude towards yourself and towards others. Um, what are you trying to prove with your life? So set realistic goals, goals that are in keeping with your abilities, what you can do, um, what your qualifications are as well. Um, we said this earlier, I think we said this last week, sometimes people take on jobs and responsibilities that they're not qualified for and that they don't have the giftedness for too. Um, put themselves in, in, in places of extreme stress. Um, write down what you've been, what you have been silently saying to yourself. Look, look over it, analyze it, have a mature friend, look over it. With you recognize and identify the thoughts you express to yourself. Remember we said we have to be careful that we don't allow the things that we say to ourselves, um, the those type of things that force and reinforce the depression. We can't listen to the voices. We almost have to learn to tell ourselves what is true, what is reasonable, what is accurate. Um, so we can't let the emotions be the voices that that are the ones who are driving us. Um, is your self-talk negative? Is it critical, judgmental, hostile, or angry? What are your imaginations and your daydreams like? Um, in what way have I been thinking that might have helped to be to bring on the depression? Um, and again, just begin controlling your thoughts and your behavior. Um, and talking about more or less in the same area there of just making sure that we're speaking about what is true, what is noble and accurate. Try putting the silent sentences that run through your mind into words. Um, this will help you to reduce the frequency with which it comes back, decrease the intensity of the idea, and lessen the feeling or the mood that it generates. Um, you know, keep a diary or a stream of consciousness. That's a good idea. Keep a journal. Um, and even I've just given someone some homework where in the week they can, um, if, if things are recurring on a regular basis, they can find out what time of the day it's happening, um, what are the circumstances around that event. If it's happening in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, is it happening at supper time? Is it just as you're about to go to work? When do those feelings sort of just come up and when do they intensify? Um, just to help someone think about what they can do, what they can change. Write down your thoughts, learn to identify your self-criticisms and then challenge them. Talk to yourself rather than allowing yourself to talk to you. And we've mentioned that already. Um, trust in God's goodness, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness, and the attributes at this time. You know, meditate on Psalm 42 as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for thee. Uh, spend time studying and reflecting upon God's word. Memorize, meditate on the scriptures. Um, and then correct your negative thinking the false view of what you have about yourself, false views of the future. Um, and, and that's important, you know, how, what is the truth about you? What does God say about you? Um, and what is the, the, what does God say about what he has promised you? Those are the ways, those are the, the, the thoughts that must um, control your mind and your, uh, your thinking. Um, avoid the guilt trap. Stop punishing yourself. Do you need to forgive yourself? Well, Technically, we can't really forgive ourselves, not theologically. Um, uh, only, only God can can deal, um, can help us with the idea of guilt. Um, and we work through the guilt by confessing it to God and claiming the promise in 1 John 1 verse 9. Um, now, there is a sense where we, we might do another study on the idea of guilt and shame um, and how that works and the idea of change and repentance. Uh, but remember that God loves you. You can't merit his love. Uh, God took the initiative, and when we were unlovely, when we were unwanted, when we were inferior, when we were rebelling against him, um, God proved, demonstrated his love for us. So while we were still sinners, he sent his son for us. So um, there's a, a Bible study there, God and me uh, equals a whole person. Um, false guilt needs to be recognized as false and got, gotten rid of. Um, and we must work at accepting ourselves um, as to who we are. It takes away the idea of insecurities. It takes the idea away that we need to be perfectionists. It takes the idea away of all those things that can contribute to our um, depression. Put yourself in your favorite scripture pa passage 
We've mentioned that before. Relax and imagine yourself walking, talking with Jesus in some scene, uh, part of the Gospels. Um, and I remember as a young man, as I was learning things, uh, for me it was Im important to, to, to see Jesus deal with other people, to see his compassion, to see the way he taught, um, how he cared for people, and to help Christ become more real to me. Um, the Gospels are, are are a really good way to do that, to see him there and put yourself in that passage just there. And um, then get out of the house or out of the office for a few minutes. Um, deliberate physical activity is very important um, in, in overcoming depression. Um, so please do that. Keep that in mind. Meditate on 1 Timothy 6, verse 11. Job 3, 25 to 26. Um, how will you let significant others know what you are thinking and feeling, and that's important. Um, if you if you know that that the depression comes back and you want to get out of it, then how do you communicate to people? How do you let people know that those people are close to you? This is how I'm feeling right now. Um, would you help me? Um, think back over what happened in the two or three days preceding the beginning of your depression. What happened the week before it set in? What were you thinking? Um, and again, the um, sort of a, having a plan where you can record maybe a week's activity so that you can help see the circumstances or your response to circumstances um, helps you define and maybe to see the patterns that you're building in your life um, that reinforces that depression that you need to break, that you need to change. Give yourself inner directions. Tell yourself, go call a friend, talk to someone who will listen. Um, and then remember your stop cards get up and do something do something that, that makes you get active um just tell yourself i don't have anything to lose by trying this learn to say to yourself i'm jumping to conclusions maybe where is the evidence that what i am saying or feeling about myself is true where are the facts um and we just need to help ourselves think and reason through this through these questions in our mind properly do i have a negative view of myself um is it a false view um, am I looking at a recent experience or an event um, incorrectly? How does that relate to me? Is, is my thinking correct or is it wrong? Is it negative? Um, and again, we spoke about avoiding the guilt trap there. Um, remove anger, rage, hostility, hate, resentments, guilt. All of those feelings that reinforce um, your depression. Um, and then also just make sure that you deal with your relationships with people. Don't be afraid to get professional help. Learn how to deal with your hostility and anger in a more constructive and acceptable model. Talk it out with someone, not everyone, and not just anyone. Find someone, find a mature believer um, who can help you. Replace negative emotional habits with positive attitudes and thought patterns. And that's important, is to realize that we need to... We've developed these habits over years and years and years, and we now have to learn to put them off and put off um, attitudes that are correct, that are in keeping with what the Bible says, um, that will help us grow. And let go of the past. Um, if you find yourself going over and over the same experience in your past, or you're continually expressing the sorrow, the hurt, the grievances, the anger, etc., then we need to break the pattern. Um, Again, God's word, prayer, Christian fellowship, um, all of those things are important and they will help us break those patterns. If you've already dealt with your depression from a biblical perspective, be prepared to take the responsibility, to take the personal leadership decisions and resolve not to be afraid of loneliness, but to include God's word, to pray and to look for Christian fellowship and also to start serving God in your local church. Find people that you can serve so that you stop focusing on yourself but you start focusing on others love drives out fear if you are a caregiver do not give up on the depressed person give reassurance to the person in a calm manner never scold let them know that you understand that you're there to help them and that you can see um, and you can help them see the causes of their depression help them develop a stronger biblically based view of god themselves and of their own self-image in Christ. Um, that's important, to have a proper Bible-based view of God, of God's promises, of his character, and how God helps them. Help them look at themselves properly 
as people are made in the image of God, who God loves and cares for. If people are suicidal, do not leave them alone. You have to be extremely careful, extremely tender. Uh, people need a caring, warm, willing person who will express that warmth, who will accept them. Remember we spoke about being welcoming of others in this whole process of counseling and helping other people. We never ever treat people like they are second rate uh, believers. We treat them, we welcome them when they're not patients. They're not, we, we are, these are believers who, who we love uh, in Christ. So people who, people who are struggling with depression and getting suicidal thoughts, we need to be welcoming, caring, warm. Um, we need to be the, the willing people who will express that warmth. We will accept them. And at times we might have to be firm, but we have this concern for them. Um, and if needs be, get them to professional, medical, and spiritual, emotional help as soon as the circumstances allow. So there's some practical um, steps that we can help one another, help individuals work our way through the, the, the spiral that has taken us down into that state of depression where we feel life is completely hopeless, we can't function properly, and we slowly work our way out with the help of God, with God's word, with the Spirit of God coming alongside us, with God's people coming alongside us and slowly helping our minds think and reason in a way that will change our attitudes and bring our emotions then into a line as we serve God, as we then get to the place where we can function properly and honor Him and walk with Him. So I pray that the Lord will, will take that. And I know it was a lot tonight. I'm going to stick the PowerPoint on the church's WhatsApp page. Um, so that you can go through it at your own time. Please take the time to read the verses. Uh, let those verses soak into your mind and your heart and pray through them. Ask God to help you. And remember that God's character is important. Uh, God's promises are important. Your faith is only as strong as how much you know and depend on who God is and that you need to walk with him and trust him. Pray that God will bless you and take care of you. Father, we we pray, Lord, that this study would have been of some help to someone who is struggling with depression. We know the despair, Father. We know the low place that depression takes people. We know the sense of loss and the sense of hopelessness. And, Father, we, we want to say to someone who's listening tonight that Jesus loves them, that he promises to take care of them, and that he wants to help them, Lord, um, who's listening tonight, walk their way through this uh, to a point where they can love him and serve him again and have the emotions and the attitudes change, Lord, we pray. And we, we don't discount the fact that this is a is a very difficult um, life to deal with. The, the state of depression can be overwhelming and suffocating. But we thank you that with your grace and with your help, that you can help people and that you can walk with people through that. And you promise never to leave, never to forsake. You promise to always make a way out. And Father, we just thank you for that. We praise you, Lord, that many people have found their way back to living a life of meaning, the fullness and purpose, a sense of security and standing firm, trusting and depending upon you. And we thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, we pray with much thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much for listening tonight, and I pray that the Lord will bless you and take care of you, and uh, hopefully we'll have another study uh, available next week, and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless and be with you. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.